Hello everyone and good evening. So, you guys requested it, the best ways to burn fat. We're going over it today and I think you'll find some answers that you weren't quite expecting, but some answers that you really need. So when we talk about burning fat, right? When it comes to burning fat, I have identified four stages that are going to help you, that, that are the best ways for you to burn fat. Now, first thing first, stage one says to move more, eat less, right? Because we're always told if we want to burn fat, we have to be in a caloric deficit. This is true. In order to be in a caloric deficit, we need to move more, eat less. I don't think that this approach right here, move more, and eat less is the best approach. And I'm going to explain why. Although this approach works, the law of thermodynamics works, and calories in, calories out works. To me, this approach, move more, eat less, is not a long-term fix, and that's my problem with it. Not only is that not a long-term fix, but it's not even the best fix, or the most optimal fix, or even the healthiest fix because I'm going to get into what that is in a minute, and I don't think it should be move more, eat less. I think it should be move more, comma, eat quality food, which in turn, when you move more and eat better food, right? Move more, eat better food, it can translation translate or transition into eating less. So why do, yes, moving more, eating less works, but why is this hard? The reason why I like this option better, eating move more, eat better, right? Move more, eat better, the reason I like this better is because the foods that we are eating or the foods that you are eating that are causing you to eat more could have what's called a high glycemic index. What does that mean? That's just a fancy term for the food you're eating could be high in sugars or high in carbohydrates, which is causing you to be hungry, okay? It's causing you to be hungry, and this hunger, being hungry, is what is causing you to eat more. So, by eating better foods, by eating better, and fueling our bodies properly with things that are higher in fiber, things that are higher in protein, maybe adding some vegetables in that we like, right? By eating better, that will aid us and help us to eating less. And of course, we know if we want to lose weight or we want to burn fat, we have to move more. But what does move more mean? We're going to get into that in stage two right now. So stage two. Diving deeper into the move more, when it comes to moving more, we have, right, let's put a one here, and a two, two options. Or a third option being both, and we'll get to what I recommend in a second. But we have stage two, to move more, we can do cardio conditioning, which would equal an increase in caloric expenditure, or build lean muscle, which would increase the amount of calories we burn at rest. Maybe not by a, a, a substantial amount, but every, I think, eight pound or so, or, or five pounds of muscle or so, would increase about 50 calories or so, increase the amount of calories burned at rest, right? Which is, is great, because now, just by sitting around doing nothing, picking your nose, you're burning more calories just because you built some muscle in your body. So the uh, uh, question would be, well, how does this add to more calories burned to rest? And the reason is, is because when you build lean muscle, well, now your body has to utilize calories in order to sustain that tissue. Or if you're consistently working out, it's also got to utilize calories to repair and rebuild that tissue, right? So that's why building lean muscle will help us to aid in calories burned at rest. So what do I recommend between these two? Both of them, of course. Strength training and conditioning both have their own separate benefits aside from fat loss. Obviously, strength training, has, or strength training has the benefit of getting stronger, increase in bone density, bone health, blood circulation, um, 
correction in, in posture and, and muscle imbalances. A bunch of, of, of uh, nervous system it, it, ability to help with balance and proprioception. All of these things come from strength training or some sort of weight training program, whether that's hypertrophy, strength, muscular endurance, stabilization. All that comes from this area of some sort of building lean mass or, or weight training, right? Um, so lifting weights is very important. Stress release is another one, right? All these things come from weightlifting. Now what about cardio? Now, there are a lot of people out there that will tell you you don't have to do cardio, and that cardio bad, and cardio is the enemy. If you are trying to pack on as much muscle as possible, I can understand where that's coming from. But this is a video about the best ways to burn fat. So I am not one of those that thinks cardio is the enemy. Cardio has an extraordinary amount of benefits, one of them being your heart. <laughs> and nothing is more important than your heart health because your heart pumps blood to your body and if your heart stops beating, you die. So cardio and conditioning is very important. Also, fun fact of the day, I don't care how hard you're strength training, an hour of walking on the treadmill is gonna burn more calories, calories than your hardest leg workout. And that is a fact. You will burn more calories doing cardio than you will weight training. Now, does that mean weight training is bad? No, because remember, we talked about how building lean muscle is going to increase the calories during your rest. So what happens if we do both? What happens if we do our conditioning, so we do an hour of cardio, whether that's steady state, uh, high intensity interval training, it all depends on, on what your goal is. If your goal is to burn fat, you might be someone who might tend to be overweight, so I would suggest more of a low impact steady state version, right? Say we do an hour of cardio, well, now we're increasing the amount of calories we're, we're burning throughout that day, and we're working on strength training, so we're working on building lean muscles, so now we're increasing the amount of calories that we're gonna burn at rest, and boom, you have that one-two punch there, and that's an ultra success factor right there, just by adding, forget even pretend like we didn't make any adjustment to our nutrition yet, we've already added two major parts of the equation by moving more, and that's building lean muscle and doing cardio. Okay, so that's stage two. Let's move on to stage three. So ignore my poorly drawn human uh, making Z's like he's storing here. But sleep, stage three, and I'll write it even bigger so for people in the back so you guys can see it. Stage three is sleep. Yes, sleeping is going to help you to burn fat. You need to sleep, but why? Yes, you burn calories when you sleep, but it's not because you're going to burn calories all night long. That's not the reason why sleep is going to, it's not going to impact you that much on your caloric burn. But the reason why sleep is going to help you to burn fat, and why it's one of the best and most underlooked, underestimated, not underestimated, um, underrated ways to burn fat is because when you don't get enough sleep and your stress increases and your willpower diminishes. The less you sleep, the more stressed that your body will be, which means it'll increase in an hormone, a hormone called cortisol, which cortisol likes to hold on to fat. So the more sleep, the less sleep you get, the more thermal is released, the more stressed you're going to be, the more the hungrier you'll be, and the more prone and vulnerable you are to binge eating or eating things that you shouldn't. So if we're focusing on our sleep and we're well rested, the less chance we have of binging or straying off what we know we're supposed to be or the more uh, balanced and in control will be of, 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 of our hormones the more in control our hormones will be the, the more balanced they'll be we'll be rested we won't be super stressed we won't be tired we won't be and, and, and another example of it is think of your workout if you're not sleeping well how's your performance in the gym probably garbage so the more you sleep, the better you're performing the gym, the better chance you'll have to, to, to burn more calories or put more effort. Increased intensity equals increased results. So the more we sleep, the better it's gonna be to burn fat, okay? Trust me, please don't, don't, under, uh, please don't underestimate this one. Please don't skip out on this, all right? Sleep, all right, it's important. And finally, guys, stage four, water. Yes, guys, besides the fact that you're mostly made of water anyway, so it's kind of important, and if you don't drink it, you die, water is important in helping you burn fat. Why? 
for a number of reasons. First of all, when it comes to building muscle, a hydrated muscle is a happy muscle, right? So if you're not drinking enough water, you're not building muscle. You need water in order, your muscles thrive off water. You need it in order to help you recover, to help flush out some, some metabolic waste and stuff in there that, that gets in there when, when you train and we get sore, it's gonna help you with that type of stuff. It's also gonna help you just, just, just help with blood circulation and a bunch of things, temperature, uh, your body's temperature, it's gonna help regulate that. Water is, does wonders. But another main reason why water actually helps with your fat loss is this stretch effect we get in our stomach. The more water we drink, the more our stomach's gonna stretch out and then that sends a signal to our brain that we're full. Which means what? You eat less. So drinking more water results in eating less. And if you eat less, you burn fat, okay? So drink water, all right? There, there's a recommended eight to 12 uh, uh, cups a day or, or eight to 12 ounces a day. Just drink, drink, if you're, just drink more than you're already drinking, okay? Don't try and go from one extreme to the other because it's not gonna happen, all right? You need to, if you're drinking a cup a day, drink two. If you're drinking three cups a day, drink four. If you're drinking 20 cups a day, you're fine. You know, so just whatever you're drinking now, just try to drink a little more. Okay, guys? Awesome. With that being said, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope that this helped you. Those are my four stages, four best ways to burn fat. Now, I know that some of you maybe were on here looking for some uh, trick or hack. And if you noticed that all four of these stages were not tricks or hacks. Unfortunately, the best way to burn fat, guys, we're going to go with the final stage five here. Right? One bonus stage. The final, the best way to burn fat is hard. That's, a, that's an R. Hard work. Okay? You can't escape any guys. All four of those stages are going to require this last big stage, and that is hard work. There is no shortcuts to this game, guys. I'm sorry if you were looking for one. There is no shortcut to getting you to burn fat. However, the good news is, it is absolutely possible if you're nailing those four stages I showed you before, you will indeed burn fat. That I can promise you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this helped you. Have an awesome day and a happy new year to everyone.